Female sexuality is presented as something abhorrently dangerous in the eyes of Victorian males such as Harker, who describes the female vampires and their overt sexuality to be both thrilling and repulsive. The use of binary opposites with the adjective thrilling and the adjective repulsive accentuates societal standards of women to be sexually subservient to men, but not in control of their own sexuality. In Ray Cluley's article, Fearing Female Sexuality in Dracula, this idea is shown as Harker being both excited and horrified, as if female sexuality is something to both long for and fear. This is representative of the societal view of the new woman during the Victorian era, with females in control of their sexuality, posing a threat of dominating men. Harker is placed in a passive, submissive role as he lay quiet, afraid to raise my eyelids. This power exchange subsets traditions of Gothic literature. The emasculation of Harker presents the new woman as unable to peacefully coexist with men, accentuating the idea that if women are in touch with their sexuality, they could over-dominate men. The mother of the narrator in the bloody chamber is described using the adjective indomitable. The narrator's mother is presented as a figure of strength and courage. We are told she shoots a man-eating tiger with her own hand. This demonstrates that she holds all the traits of a masculine hero. The passing down of her husband's antique service revolver symbolises her possession of the power traditionally held by men. However, she is also equipped with maternal telepathy. This adds another dimension to her empowerment, as it is a feminine strength, suggesting Carter is employing the notion that women may embrace their femininity while still retaining an advantage over men. Lucy is presented as a promiscuous woman who strays from Victorian societal standards for females as she appears lustful and dominant as she queries why can't they let a girl marry three men, or as many want her. In Ray Cluley's article, Fearing Female Sexuality in Dracula, this quote is shown to reveal her as something of a coquette or a vamp. Furthermore, this promiscuity is suggested by the sexual connotations implied with she wants blood, demonstrating how she is overcome by desire rather than need through the connotations of the verb want. Additionally, the dramatic irony of both Helsing and the reader having knowledge of Lucy's blood transfusions from three men, two being outside of her marriage, presents her blood to be contaminated, suggesting sexual deviancy. This is through the exchange of bodily fluids from men other than her husband, suggesting her purity, like her blood, has been tainted. As most Victorian women, Lucy is constantly sexualised and her physical appearance is weighted above all else, yet there seems no escape from this cycle of objectification, as even in death she is valued for her beauty, with her face of unequalled sweetness and purity. This illustrates the concept of the male gaze frequently demonstrated within literature, as even in the peaceful release of death, there is the constant reference to Lucy's beauty and the loss of a beautiful female, rather than mention of her character and personality. This concept of male gaze was a term coined by the feminist film critic Laura Mulvey in 1975 as the act of depicting women in the visual arts and literature from a masculine and heterosexual point of view, which presents women as objects of male pleasure. The objectification of women is a significant theme in The Bloody Chamber and other stories. The narrator in The Bloody Chamber is merely an object of possession, as she ceases to be her child in becoming his wife. She is always owned by someone else and condemned to be objectified, as her husband assesses her as if he was inspecting horse flesh. The snow child is described as being the child of his desire, referring to the Count's desires, Females are only valued for their appearance and sexual desires. The girl is a helpless character, unable to control her destiny, whereas the Count wishes her into existence. Whilst Lucy subverts the traditional expectations of Victorian women within society, Mina adheres to such expectations throughout the novel, until she reaches the same fate from Dracula. The presentation of this as a sexual violation and the transformation occurring to Mina as the pure female appears even more horrific than that of Lucy's, as we are reminded of her innocence her white nightdress smeared with blood, and a thin stream trickled down the man's bare breast, which was shown by his torn dress. The adjective white connotes purity, and the juxtaposition of the noun blood presents this as a corruption of her innocence, suggesting the loss of virginity, presenting Mina as tainted. This is reflective of the Madonna Hall complex identified by Freud, in which females are perceived as one of two drastically different sexual labels. The expectations of females within Victorian society is strengthened by the irony of Mina's exposure in her white nightdress. Mina's fears for the sake of Lucy's reputation, as she exposes herself in her nightdress, have now become her own terrifying reality. This demonstrates that the once juxtaposing females of Mina and Lucy, contrasting in their regard for societal codes, have reached the same fate, suggesting the weakness of females within society to fall victim to corruption and transgression.